Hi there, Dave Schwartz here, author of Roll the Bones, The History of Gambling, which is now out in the incredibly deluxe Casino Edition, and I'm back with another chapter summary. Today I'm talking about Chapter 12, America's Playground Again, which is about Atlantic City casinos, and this one hits very close to home for me since I was born in and grew up in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And the chapter starts with a brief run through of Atlantic City history from its first heyday in the 1860s, how it was popular all the way through World War II, and then the, then the decline after that. I also talk about the illegal gambling that was around for most of that period and kind of explain the justification for wanting to turn to gambling later on. From there, I talk about how support for legalizing casinos in Atlantic City grew in the 1960s, especially after the 1964 Democratic National Convention, which focused a lot of the nation's attention on how run down Atlantic City had gotten. Um, then I discuss the first referendum in New Jersey, which was in 1974, which failed. This would have allowed casinos throughout the entire state on local option. And when that failed, people thought casinos in Atlantic City were done, were gone, would never come back. But two years later, there's another referendum on the ballot. This one specified Atlantic City only. And what do you know? It was successful. So casinos were legalized in 1976 in Atlantic City. After that, I talk about how the legislature put together the rules for gambling in casinos. And I lead up to the opening of Resorts International on May 26, 1978, a proud day for Atlantic City. Huge, huge shift there. I also talk about some of the crime control and political issues behind the decision to award resorts a temporary and then a permanent license. And I talk a lot about some of this licensing backstory with Caesars Boardwalk Regency, which was Caesars first casino in Atlantic City. And actually the first casino I personally remember. I remember it being very red in there and having very low ceilings and a lot of mirrored surfaces. Um, so yeah, that's my personal recollection. Luckily, I'm going off of documentary sources, though, so I don't rely solely on that in talking about the casino. Talk about how Clifford and Stuart Perlman were first forced to step down in order for Caesars to get their permanent license, which is a big deal because they were the chairman and another prominent member of the company. I also discuss a lot of other casinos, Bally's, the Sands, which started as the Brighton, the Golden Nugget, and Steve Wynn and the Tropicana, and spend a good deal of time talking about my former employer in Atlantic City, Donald Trump, and his casinos, which were the Castle slash Marina, which is now the Golden Nugget Atlantic City, the Plaza, and the Trump Taj Mahal. Finish with a discussion of the recent troubles in Atlantic City, the slowdown since 2006, and basically all the news about the city through December 2012. And I finally lead into the next chapter, which is going to be about how Las Vegas strikes back against this competitor, because Atlantic City really was a big competitor to Las Vegas in the early 80s. That's pretty much everything I cover in that chapter. There's a ton of stuff. For this one, it was really a labor of love for me because I am an Atlantic City native to write this. And I uh, hope you check the book out, and especially that chapter. And if you'd like more information about it, you can go to rollthebonesbook.com. Thank you very much.